friend of mine, Irvis Orozco, is a young man here in Sacramento. He is part of the Sacramento Building Healthy Communities Council uh, that's here with California Endowment. He's also part of a Youth Sustainability Council, and he's been doing incredible work here on various things, including the, the DREAM Act. I want to invite him up. In addition to doing just powerful political work, he's also doing powerful cultural work as well. He does spoken word, and he's going to be one of our concluding uh, presenters here. So please give him your love. Good afternoon, you all. How's it going? I'd just like to make a shout out to everybody that's here. Thank you for being here. My name is Irvis Orozco. I am a student at UC Davis, majoring in international relations and community and regional development. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my struggles of going through higher education and getting there. Just to share with you all, I'm an undocumented student. I was brought to this country when I was about seven months old, and this is the only place that I've known as a home. I'm going to go ahead and start with a poem. It takes more courage to reveal insecurities than to hide them. More strength to relate to people than to dominate them. More manhood to abide by thought of principle rather than blind reflex. What I have learned is that toughness is found in the heart and soul, not in an immature mind or brute muscles. I've been able to travel all across the country to speak to students that are in the same situation as I am. Um, I have found that not only um, am I a scapegoat because of the color of my skin or where I come from, but because of different backgrounds and different political uh, strategies that have been conceived in this nation. Um, we are part of a whole system that has been polit politicalized there's a whole system behind us that has been uh, against us. Um, I have learned that in order to escape any of these things, education has been at the forefront of creating any change. And that's why I continue into education. Uh, then the following uh, poem is a poem by Cesar Chavez, and he talks about education and how we can uh, create change. Once social change starts, it cannot be reversed. You cannot uneducate the person that has learned to read. You cannot humiliate the person that now feels pride. You cannot oppress the people who are not afraid anymore. We have seen the future, and the future is ours. <laughs> Uh, the next one is a poem that I wrote about how I was feeling um, a few months back about um, not being able to finish school on time just because of these uh, oppressions that are coming up. Uh, even though I, am, uh, I have been here for about 23 years of my life, I am still unable to continue on into higher education, receive a driver's license, uh, do, any, do any of these things that people normally have. Um, Unfortunately, the system needs to be changed because it's not correct now. So that's why I've been able to share my story to other students so I can encourage them to continue on into higher education. What I wanted to be. As I entered high school, I wanted to be a police officer or a detective. But because, uh, because I wanted to help out my community. But because I had no papers, I had to quit that dream. As I entered the thoughts of going to college, this thought came out because I wanted to help represent my community. I wanted to become a probation officer because I believed that I could help out the young thugs in my community. My dreams were shattered because I had no papers. 
As I entered college, I saw myself becoming an FBI agent to help those in my community and to help the representation of my heritage in a distinct position and to become a role model to other students. My dreams were shattered because I got pulled over without a driver's license and now I have a record. As I veered into my college years, I became an activist, joining different political causes to help diverse communities, including being part of the Black Student Union. I marched, gave speeches, and organized many events to help my community. I felt that this was needed to be done because I had no papers. I felt the hardships of my community and decided to give these people a voice. In my last few years of school, I have, I have had to work to pay for my tuition, oftentimes working in the fields, which my mom brought, brought us. Uh, she came here as an undocumented worker to work in the fields. She took me out of school at age 13, but I decided to ask her that I wanted to continue on into education. I was accepted to UCLA, Berkeley, as well as UC Davis. Unfortunately, I, uh, my number one schools, I didn't get to decide where I wanted to go, but I still uh, have continued into my senior year at UC Davis. During this time, I've had to take two hour commutes to UC Davis from my home here in Sacramento. At times, having to couch surf from friends, friends to other friends' homes. But I do not give up. I learned that being active in student movements would help me in reconciling that I have the strength within myself and I'm able to mentor others starting in this movement. I do, I do this because I have no papers, but I do have a voice. What I have learned is that with dedication, dreams, community building, and serving as a role model and educator, I'm the person that represents the essence of community building. I'm a dream act activist, student leader, and I do this because I have no papers. In the near future, I want to show all these students that higher education can be attained. In the next year or so, I want to apply either into law school or medical school. And I, I see that as something that we as students should pursue and students of color should definitely pursue. I have seen violence between brown and black communities because there's a political setup that sets both of us apart to not achieve our highest dreams and for us to fall within the cracks. This political setup has been set up so we can't achieve, but let's go ahead and break this gap. Let's create some achievement bridges between, between whites, blacks, Asians, and Latino communities. In the 1960s, when Cesar Chavez was doing his organizing work, a lot of people, uh, there was people of different backgrounds coming together for his efforts. Uh, people that didn't speak the same languages, but they created a certain unity um, that they started each meeting at, and that was called the Unity Clap. I'm asking you all who are standing here to join me in a second in the Unity Clap. The Unity Clap represents that one person can start a whole movement, and that person can have a bigger voice if we join in a bigger group. Educación, si se puede! Education, yes we can. Thank you for closing us with a unity clap, clap, how appropriate. So before we wrap up, I want to say a few words. One is I just want to thank my brothers and sisters who came out and, and represented here today. Leader, we got a leader and an agitator. And I am angry. Mm -hmm. When I was asked to speak here today, I was excited. A little bit anxious. But after thinking about it, I became angry. Angry because we are here today. 
Angry because of the need to have this conversation. Angry that this has taken so long to happen. <coughs> As a young man of color, I have been through many trials. I was brought to the United States when I was two years old by my immigrant parents. Because of my parents' work throughout my childhood, we moved a lot. In elementary school, we moved a total amount of nine different times. This made making friends very difficult. <coughs> Because of that, I spent a lot of time in the streets with cousins and other family members that were, for whatever reason, involved in gangs. And now, the funny thing about gangs is they provide a false sense of security. And growing up in an underprivileged area, security be becomes one of your main concerns. Mm -hmm. I can continue to go on about how hard it was growing up for me, but I'll get to the point. I'm what you would call you know, for lack of a better word, one of those lucky people. My freshman year in high school, while hanging out with the familia, there was a drive-by shooting where I lost one of my closest friends. I was lucky enough to have the support uh, to help me get through the loss, uh, both at my high school uh, and through some of my family members, to get back on the right track, help me graduate, and to help me get to where I am today. But not everybody is as lucky as me to have that support. Not everybody knows who to go to for help or where uh, help can be provided for them. I would like to take this time to thank this committee for having this very important conversation. This work is long overdue, so I'm glad I'm going to start with a poem. It takes more courage to reveal insecurities than to hide them, more strength to relate to people than to dominate them more manhood to abide by thought of principle rather than blind reflex. What I have learned is that toughness is found in the heart and soul, not in the mature mind or group muscles. My name is Urbis Orozco. I am a student at UC Davis, majoring in international relations, my emphasis in economics. Um, I am an undocumented student. I was brought to this country when I was seven months old and I am still an undocumented student. I still remember when we were singing the Pledge of Allegiance in second grade, and how proud I felt to be able to stand in front of the flag, and realized that I had just learned a whole new language, and I was integrated into this country. At the age of 13 years old, my mom had taken me out of school to work out in the fields with her. My mother came here to work out in the fields at the San Joaquin Valley. I worked for about three months, and I had asked my mom to let me go back to school as long as I did, I did well. That same year, I got to go on a trip to UC Berkeley, where I got some mentoring from a program that gets people, students of color, into UC Berkeley. They told me that as long as I got good grades, was involved in my community, and represented everything about my culture that was positive, that I would be able to succeed. Uh, my freshman year, I was involved with the California Center for Youth and Civic Participation, where I got chosen to be a student, um, uh, got chosen between 25 students throughout the whole state that did uh, health and policy recommendations. It felt so awesome. This is almost my tenth year of doing advocacy work and speaking on behalf of legislators on issues that are concerned. Through this program, I got to understand that I have a voice as a youth. Even though I'm not allowed to vote in this country, I have been doing positive things. I, it hurts to, to know that while I was in high school, a lot of the same students that were friends with me had a lot of problems at home, um, whether it be a single home, gangs, violence. These kids were being opted out out of, out of school and into the prison system instead of education.